Welcome to chapter 5 in series 3 and this chapter is all about the enemy system. So by the end of it you will have written a really powerful enemy system. Well the AI is very simple. It's pretty much just zombie AI but the way the system works allows you to add your own behaviors, your own navigation behaviors on top of it. So let's go through it pretty quickly. Uh, so for example is this enemy master script full of events uh, this animation script here, which uh, pretty much sets the parameters for driving the animations, it is completely independent of all the other uh, scripts, so it doesn't actually need them to tell it to do anything, uh, which is really good. It's just dri driven off the event system. And then there's the enemy detection script, which uses an overlap sphere and also a line cast to see if the enemy can actually see the player uh, in in a line and that you know there aren't any walls. This allows the player to actually hide. So the enemy will pursue the player as soon as they see them. And if the player hides, they go somewhere, the enemy will go to the to the last seen position of the player. And if the player continues to you know move up behind walls and stuff, then the enemy won't know where they are anymore. Which is very, very neat. And uh, coupled with a behavior like wander, this navigation wander, just wandering around aimlessly, the enemy would then do that. I don't cover it here. You could write your own navigation patrol script and replace the wander. So just knock off the, don't attach the wander script and instead put on a patrol script. And you could then in fact have your enemy carrying out a patrol as well. Uh, all right. So but continuing on. Uh, so all that is is that if you can't see the uh, player, if the enemy can't see them, then they carry out this event lost target. And uh, continuing onwards, uh, so if the enemy can be seen, then yep, set the navigation target, and that also sets who the enemy can attack. So it's completely independent, the script, the attack script from the movement, and the enemy will always try to attack the player if they have their attack within range and satisfying various conditions. And it, they'll then access the player's master script and call the event player health deduction if the player is actually successfully attacked. And the uh, navigation, this nav pursue, this is the actual navigation uh, to try and pursue the target uh, that was seen. Then you've got destination reach. So once you've, once the enemy has gotten to a destination, they should go to idle if they don't have a new destination to go to. And this nav wonder, it'll kick in if it's got no target. So if no target has been identified, so no, nothing picked up in detection, then the enemy should just wander around aimlessly within a certain unit sphere, which I will keep moving on and on as the player, as the enemy moves. And then navigation pause. This is important when uh, the enemy loses health, so which means that they've been hit by something, so they've taken damage from a gun or a bazooka. That's where the process damage method comes in. Or this enemy collision field script. And this is a really, really neat script. It allows you to throw items at the enemy and they get hurt. So that is really fun and very interesting as well. And, uh, well, that's more or less it. Then there's other stuff related. So like the enemy ragdoll, uh, if the enemy is, uh, pretty much their health drops too low, uh, then the ragdoll, well, they die pretty much. Then their ragdoll activates and they collapse as a ragdoll. Uh, anyway, and that gets triggered, of course, by the enemy health script, which will call event enemy die if their health falls too low. And uh, finally, we have this spawner proximity. That's just for spawning a bunch of enemies within a unit sphere. And that's pretty much it. All right, so that is chapter five. So it's going to be a very interesting chapter and a very powerful one once you've finished it. So anyway, thanks for watching and keep going onwards.